beneath the immense and crushing weight of the ocean, in a realm where sunlight has never pierced the darkness, scientists have stumbled upon something truly terrifying. It is a creature unlike anything ever recorded, a bizarre fusion of features that defies all we know about marine life. Discovered thousands of feet beneath the ocean's surface, this deep-sea find has not only left scientists amazed at its alien-like shape, but also bewildered by how it can exist in such immense darkness and pressure. Is it a living fossil from a bygone era? Or something new altogether? Let's take a look in this video as we uncover the frightening truth behind this deep-sea animal. The enigma started with one unnerving question, what actually inhabits the deepest, coldest, and darkest regions on our planet? In September 2024, a group of the Mindoro UWA Deep Sea Research Center collaborated with Kelpie Geosciences, with some financing from Inc. Fish, to seek that response. Its hunting ground of choice was the Tonga Trench, a far-off gash on the South Pacific Ocean floor dropping over 10 kilometers. Only the Mariana Trench plunges deeper. Few have ever ventured down into the suffocating darkness, and fewer still have returned with anything more than scraps of the unknown. If this kind of story touches your heart, if you're someone who cares about truth, responsibility, and speaking up for the voiceless, please like this video, subscribe to our channel Spark Science, and share it with someone who should hear it. Let's get started. This mission was not like that. Equipped with the next generation of baited camera landers, sturdy, pressure-resistant machines designed for the abyss, the crew set out to execute a dangerous but straightforward scheme attach a camera to a heavy frame, bait it with the head of a newly frozen mackerel, and drop it sinking into the trench's dark maw. There, sunlight has never penetrated. Pressure is sufficient to bend steel. And the sole witnesses to whatever exists in that strange world would be the cold, unblinking eye of a camera and the forbearance of the scientists waiting above. The intent was not simply to catch the unknown, it was to record evidence. Uncooked, unedited proof of the bizarre and cloistered life existing in Earth's last remaining unspoiled wilderness. The sea at first seemed calm. Only the lazy churn of floating sediment crossed the live feed, and the soft murmur of the camera filled the control room. A fish head hung in the current, gently swaying beneath the soft red glow of the lights. Hours passed in silence, nothing but shadows and patience. And then it happened. The water moved, initially subtly, but sufficiently to have every scientist on board lean forward in their seats. From the left border of the frame, something appeared. A shadow. A huge one. Gliding with slow, unhurried majesty, without any sound. It did not swim. It glided, as if a submarine wrapped in living tissue. No bioluminescent light, no flicker to give it away, but a deeper darkness than the dark around it. Its shape was virtually impossible to see. For a moment, it might have been mistaken for a floating boulder in the current, until it halted, in front of the camera. The room came to a standstill. At last, one voice shattered the quiet, what is that? The creature moved in a slow circle, just at the periphery of the lens. Then it rotated, and the scientists got enough of a glimpse to realize this was something they had never seen before. Its snout was broad, as thick as a tree trunk, with two pale, ghostly eyes embedded deep in its skull. Its jaws were closed, but the mere size of them, wide, serrated, clearly adapted for crushing, was sufficient to inspire horror. Its flesh appeared to be ancient, leathery, and wrinkled, spotted and blackened like the rock that surrounded it. It wasn't a squid. It wasn't a shark they had seen before. Not even those hideous goblin sharks or ancient frilled killers hauled up in deep nets stood comparison. This was heavier. Stranger. And then it did something no deep-sea animal had ever been recorded doing. It glared at the camera. For almost thirty seconds, it remained motionless in mid-air. No movement. No sound. Just a silent confrontation between machine and beast, with the overwhelming ocean closing in around them both. Then, without a word of warning, it bolted ahead. The screen flashed black. Jaws yawned open, filled with razor-sharp teeth, and shut on, nothing, but that was not what made it let out a screeching cry of metal. 
The feed cut to static. The control room fell silent, apart from the insistent beep of equipment trying to re-establish contact desperately. And then, in an instant, the picture flickered back, scratched, misted, shaking. And the creature was still there. So what happened next? Keep watching to find out. The feed was jerky, waterlogged, and slightly askew, but against all the odds, it was still alive. Somehow, the camera had survived the first violent onslaught. Within the control room, the scientists sat stunned in horror, their hearts racing, eyes fixed on the shaking screen. The creature had dropped the lens, but it hadn't lost interest. It drifted close by, hovering in the gloom. For a few anxious seconds, nothing stirred except a heavy, dark mass slowly sliding back into frame. And then the camera captured it, a flash of the body whole. Enormous. Muscular. Its skin was dark and scaly, like it had been pulled forth out of another time. It moved with a ghostly accuracy, weighty yet unaccountably graceful, disturbing nearly nothing in the surrounding water. It turned once more, and the mouth appeared. This time, the opening of its jaws was purposeful, nearly calculated. Gradually, impossibly wide, the lower jaw swung far beyond what was natural, in a manner that was appallingly practiced. Within was a horror, lines of jagged conical teeth, some blunt, some serrated, all set deep within thick pink gums. For an instant, it merely hovered, jaws open, as if measuring up the camera, considering. And then it hit. Unpredictably, the picture jerked. A cacophonous crunch boomed through the ship speakers, causing the control room to tremble. This time, the camera was not only watching the predator. It was inside. The lens plunged into blackness. Water whooshed by the housing, and some softness, maybe the creature's huge tongue, rubbed against the casing. The force was tremendous, pinching from all directions. Teeth ground against the reinforced body, each collision sending shivers throughout the room. No longer curiosity now. Hunger. A voice cut through the quiet, it's attempting to consume the camera. Another barely whispered, with disbelief, that is the interior of its mouth. No one could bring themselves to turn away. The screen shook hard repeatedly, but the camera remained, designed to withstand the void but never for the teeth of a living submarine. And then, suddenly, it ceased. The pressure was gone. Light, what little made it through the deep, returned. The camera fell away, slick, dented, but still rolling. Static wavered at the boundaries of the feed, but the image was still whole. The predator itself was not gone. It hung above the bait with an inhuman stillness. And then, with awful accuracy, it hurtled down. The jaws closed, engulfing the mackerel head in one flowing, uninterrupted movement. In that moment, the team saw something profoundly disturbing. This was not a beast cowed by light, sound, or unfamiliar equipment entering its territory. It had learned about the camera. Tested it. Bitten once with control, and then a second time with killing power, as if measuring its capabilities. And in the process, it had shown something much more frightening than its existence itself. Only later, after recovering the rig and going over the footage, did the scientists realize how close they had been to losing it all. The second ferocious snap of those jaws had almost shattered the camera's reinforced housing. Another few centimeters deeper, and the unit would have exploded in the trench pressure, destroying every second of the encounter. But the most chilling detail wasn't in the destruction. It was in the eyes of the creature. Frame by frame, slow motion playback uncovered a horrific secret, prior to its first charge, it hadn't turned towards the bait, it had turned precisely towards the camera. This was no mindless predator reacting to movement. It had seen the lens. It had chosen. In the lab, Dr. Jessica Kalbush sat pale and silent as the footage ended. When she finally spoke, her voice trembled, that's not just a deep sea predator. That's an apex, something we've never documented. Not at this depth. She stopped, gazing at the frozen view of the creature's unblinking stare. And judging by how it came for us, it's watched a long time. 
This wasn't a hunt. It wasn't feeding. It was a declaration. When the video was broken down frame by frame, the clues started falling into place, its size, its slow, deliberate movements, its ghostly patience. The predator that had almost wrecked the camera, swallowed the bait in one gulp, and slid through the trench like some ancient specter had a name, the Pacific Sleeper Shark. Somniosus Pacificus Initially, the crew rebelled against the conclusion. Pacific sleeper sharks are some of the most mysterious of all the big predators. Their elusive behavior, sedate lifestyle, and love of the cold dark depths have hidden them from human view. Yet this sighting was unusual, not just because of the degree of clarity, but for where it occurred. These sharks are usually found in the North Pacific, off Alaska, Canada, and Japan. But this one had been caught on camera thousands of kilometers to the south, patrolling the dark depths of the Tonga Trench. This was not unusual, it was unheard of. The first recorded sighting of a Pacific sleeper shark this far south, and definitely at this depth. The shark was 